My name is Terry Michael. I'm director of the Washington Center for Politics and Journalism. I'm also a freelance investigative reporter in Washington, D.C., where from July 22nd to 27th of 2012, I attended the 19th International AIDS Conference, a group of about 23,000 people from all over the world, most of whom make their livings studying the single pathogen retroviral theory of acquired immune deficiency syndrome. I should note that I'm also part of the worldwide community of people who dissent from that single pathogen theory. We believe that AIDS is real, but that it was of multifactorial causation. During the course of the conference, I ran into Dr. Robert Gallo, the uh, co-discoverer of the human immunodeficiency virus, as it's called, along with Dr. Luc Montagné of France. I asked Gallo what he thought of Montagné's 1990 assertion at the 1990 San Francisco International AIDS Conference that HIV isn't enough, that cofactors are needed to cause AIDS. I also asked Gallo what he thought of Montagnier's assertion made in a filmed interview in 2006 for Brent Leung's very excellent House of Numbers documentary, in which Montagnier said, the body can rid itself of HIV in just a few weeks if you have a good immune system. Uh, as you might expect, Gallo uh, was not very... Uh, positive about either of those assertions. I also asked Gallo what he thinks of the um, so-called pre-exposure prophylaxis, giving a well-assessed, highly toxic antiretroviral chemotherapy, not to immediately to HIV positives, but to people who have tested clearly negative for the antibody proteins that are supposed to indicate HIV infection. The quality of this audio recording that you're about to hear is not very good, but on the YouTube notes, I have uh, listed or provided a link to the uh, transcript of the entire 10-minute interview, as well as providing a link to my personal website, www.terrymichael.net, in which I've done a lot of writing over the last five years about descent from the HIV equals AIDS theory. So again, the audio isn't very good, but look for the transcript, and thank you very much for listening. For that. I was press secretary for the Democratic National Committee. Uh, well, that was after that. I was press secretary for a couple of members of Congress, Paul Simon, uh, Bob Manchin. You're always here in Washington. Oh, I've been here for 37 years. I run the Washington Center for Politics and Journalism. I teach college journalists about politics. I wanted to ask you a question. I've always wanted to ask you this question. Fire away. Ever since uh, Luc Montagnier in 2006 said the body can rid itself of HIV in a few weeks. You can't be serious quoting him in this day and age. Well, 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 I know I'm, I'm only asking you what, okay, what, do, you think? what do you think yeah. of what he said. Because you know what, because he, it's totally you know what he's saying now. Homeopathy. I I, I, he's I, into homeopathy. He's into anti-vaccine parades. He's, he was just... In You're on na the na yes. Oh, okay. Nature just wrote from 35 major scientists yes. and I know scientists. that he should give up the Cameroon Center. And I had to withdraw from it because of what he was doing. And apparently he was demanding that they all sign something so that anything discovered there goes to his company. And But that wasn't the bad part. Beyond that, that was not good, but the bad part was the anti-vaccine and the homeopathy. So he, whatever he said in 2006, I, it's hard to, but I, well, I will answer let's go the back question. To, okay. Just pretend it came from you. Let's not say Montagnier, because it doesn't, I don't think there's any, sorry, you know, I, well, forgive me. I just, I wouldn't use his quote. quote okay, him. then let's go back to the last time this conference was in mm -hmm. America, when he said, it takes 85. I was 90. There, I no, 90. San Francisco, 1990. That was 22 years ago. Yeah. He, that's he where he right. introduced the thought that... Um, First one was 85. Yes, yes. That's where he introduced the thought that HIV requires cofactors. What, what did you think of his cofactor view at the time? This was 1990. From the beginning to now, I used to say, to, to make an extreme to what he'd say, I used to say it takes... Even Clark Kent plus the virus will get AIDS unless they're born with a few percent of people that can battle it, okay? With do those or endogenous host genetic factors. Okay, that's been borne out abundantly. If there's a specific cofactor, let me put it another way. The best way I can explain it is this. Of course, in every disease, every disease, including AIDS, there are factors that make progression faster, 
faster, and there are factors that slow it down. And if you say list some, I could we could sit down and have a half hour discussion to list many. But when I hear you say a cofactor or loop, to a scientist it has a very specific meaning. For example, in Burkitt lymphoma. Epstein-Barr virus plays a role in the cause of this lymphoma in Africa, but it's one step of many steps, and some are also exogenous, i.e. specific cofactors. In the case of Burkitt lymphoma, it's malaria. It drives the growth of B cells, and those B cells develop into a lymphoma if they also have EBV genes in them. So it's multifactorial. In HIV, no one on earth to this day has ever identified any specific factor needed other than a human in the virus. I'm curious, have you discussed it with Bon Tanya? Have you, his, his, the questions he's raised, have you ever discussed it with him? Since he made that comment in 2006. No one would. So you haven't? You've never talked to him about this? Well, yeah, I guess I'm sure we talked so much at that time. I had to. Don't know since 2006. Since 2006. This, this statement. No. I mean, they've had, you've had conferences. But look, it would, it, the burden of the evidence is on the person who claims it. Yes. Not the persons who say, I don't believe it, there's no evidence for it. So you, you tell me why you shouldn't be criticizing that statement because there isn't a shred of evidence for it. What's the evidence for a specific cofactor? If you know it, please tell me because I'm ignorant of it. I just don't know of it. And I think that sets up... What do you think you led him to say this? Led him to say it? This, 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 that the body can rid itself of HIV and a... I led him to say it. No, no, I said, what do you think led him to say this? You know, what can they say? Is he senile? Is he old? Uh, Terry? No, Terry, he, Terry, he's, 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 he's a couple years older than me. I mean, but this is 2006. He was saying things like that in 2000. He was talking about mycoplasma, which can cause human disease, being a necessary cofactor. Wow. There was 0, 0.0 evidence for that. Now he's talking about homeopathy, where he takes electromagnetic waves from an infinite dilution of bacterial right. DNA. No, I'm familiar it, with homeopathy. Was, I've, I've not. Yeah, but th this kind of homeopathy, this is how bad it is. I'll take bacteria from you. you everybody has bacteria, right? right? You spit in a jar, dilute it almost infinitely in water. Yeah. And I have a machine that makes electromagnetic waves with this. Yeah. No, and I, he's going to cure prion disease with this. Right. People were throwing him out of office. What, what can I say? Yeah. I, I mean, there are people who, I don't believe in homeopathy, but there are people who also have intelligent thoughts about other things. Well, no, it's not all the same. homeopathy. It's right not here. all homeopathy. It's the, the cofactor thing. It's the tetracycline. It's papaya. He gave the Pope papaya for Parkinson. Why don't you ask him about that? Does he still treat papaya? And I, I, my guess, off the record, is that's commercial. He's, he's papaya extracts to treat Parkinson's disease. Is there evidence for that? If you know it, please tell me, because I have friends with Parkinson's disease too. So I'd like to tell them. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe it's a kernel of truth. Like, yes, malnutrition encourages uh, poor immune system, so well, nourish people well. And maybe These are no fluff, worries. foggy, and silly thoughts. Of course malnutrition makes your immune system go down. It makes everything go down. So if you're talking about starvation, okay, but don't give me this shit of, 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 of a pulp of a papaya. What evidence is there? We're in 2012. It's a scientific era. You need evidence to make statements. One last thing. But are you with me? Yes, yes. No, I, I, mean, I, I want to make the you argument. I've been studying this for five years, and uh, I read everything. Let me make a clear I don't think he's, he's not saying all homeopathy is bad. Or he's wrong. Saying, or I'm wrong. just saying when it's extreme saying, and nonsense. Yeah. Of okay. I well, but the one last, so I'm going to take your, your time. Wait, I just say, say in general, though. Uh, why does somebody do things? Why do people say HIV doesn't exist? Why do people say HIV doesn't cause AIDS? Why do people say America invented, created it? I mean, I, I had a German named Siegel from East Berlin, a geneticist who tried to put it on the United States. These are political reasons, stupidity, and narcissism. Okay. So, and, you know, I like, I want attention. How can I get attention? Gotcha. So the last thing I want to ask you is PrEP. The um, giving of what we know from well-assessed side effects of uh, Trubata and the other uh, ARVs after about 15 years. Yes. Because I'm yes. 65, I'm gay, I've watched people take it for 15 years, I've seen heart attacks, I've I seen strokes. You. I mean, I mean, so, so, do, do you so, think PrEP so, should be given so to right, HIV negatives? Do you think PrEP should be given to HIV negatives? Would you as a clinician... Question. I'm not a leader of that, okay? And right. you probably noticed I've kept out of it. Yes. Uh, that's a, 
There's my clinical colleague. There's another one over there. You should really ask the bald headed guy. So you're not necessarily on board with uh, prescribing. Uh, I, 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 I put it another way. I don't want to uh, get in so many battles that I, you know, my view would be that we're not going to do this forever. We're not going to do it for the whole world. You know, so I think it can help some people. For example, a gay man who's at risk, whose partner is, is, is positive, maybe. But yes, they can cause a little renal problem. Yes, you can build resistance to them that might escape. Yes, they have other side effects. At least one of them does. That yeah. the so, I mean, you've got to balance this. I mean, I don't if a doctor it. said, I'm going to give you um, antibiotics because you may go have sex with the bass, do you think that would be malpractice? <laughs> <laughs> you ask tough questions. <laughs> you have a point. That's all I'll say. You have a point. And, and uh, the FDA just approved this for people who are negative. I, 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 didn't, I didn't give, it, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't give you an answer. I didn't give you an answer. Okay. Okay. But I, I, I am not on the bandwagon, okay? mainly because I see some risk, and not only to the individual, but for resistant mutants developing. Yes, and Jay Levy has said that for 20 years. Yes. Well, we're on the same side in this one. And I can't so, get him uh, to talk about it. Well, you know, because it's going for it. he has taken $25 million in NIH grants in the last 20 years. <laughs> well, there's also that you may protect somebody. But my, another point I have is that I'm infected. You or she are my partner. You take the medicine, but I'm promiscuous. What about all the other people? Yeah. I'm not taking it. Yeah. No, there's no argument for me on this subject. It's just that it boggled my mind the FDA fast, fast tracked this, and now the world I, I th thinks I think, that we've think, got an antidote to well, that's, that's uh, HIV. Well, that's what, I mean, that's ridiculous. Some people said the cure is here because this is yeah. terrible. We don't have a cure. It is the number one point. We don't have a cure. I wish we did, my God. But, I mean, it, it, this. It, my view will be, it probably won't be long-lasting. But if you asked me, was it a new concept, even the, the concept really isn't new. Because we know if you treated a baby, you might protect, right? You know if you treated a lab worker who got exposed, you could protect. There's never been a single instance of a lab worker getting HIV. I know. <laughs> not a single no, no, that's not true. I'm sorry to tell you it's not true. Well, maybe one or two or three. In the early years, you don't know, because they didn't, they didn't talk about it. There, no, I had three collaborators infected, and two died. One was working on our virus at Frederick Merlin, mass producing it. He had dermatitis skin. He didn't wear gloves. There was an accident in the centrifuge. Virus in concentrated mass amounts all over the place. Put his hands in. Got it. I have died. met this gentleman. Yes, yeah. we have okay. plugged him in. This okay. Guy right here. Do you know? yeah, this is Dr. Ritfield. Runs our plan. I recognize his face. Yes. Right, <laughs> From uh, well, everybody. Uh, no, no, no. We've, we've already been together. Okay. Well, let me let me just stop.